In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about analytic methods for computing limits. Um, in other words, we're going to be discussing algebraic methods for computing limits instead of relying on graphs and tables. So first we need to talk about a couple of the simplest limits that will help us compute limits of um, other types of functions. So let's say that we have c is a constant, um, and we want to compute the limit as x goes to a of c. So we can use what we know so far about graphs to create um, the rule for this particular limit. So if I have a graph of y equals some constant c, and I have a value a um, that I'm interested in um, approaching, then I can see from my graph that as x approaches a, the value of my function would approach c. So we have this rule that the limit as x goes to a for any constant c is going to be equal to c. So for example, you have things like the limit as x goes to 2 of 5 would be 5. The second simplest limit is if we want to compute the limit as x goes to some number a of x. So we think of the graph y equals x, and I think about what happens as I approach a on this graph, and I see that as I get closer and closer to a, I'm going to get closer and closer to the value of a within this function, which is a. So we see that the limit as x goes to a of x would be equal to a. Or, in an example, we could see that the limit as x goes to 2 of x would be equal to 2. Okay. So now let's look at um, our general limit laws. So these laws um, assume that we have um, two limits that exist. Assume that the limit as x goes to a of f of x and the limit as x goes to a of g of x are both limits that we can work with. Um, then we have all of the following properties that we're going to discuss here, where c is a real number and m and n are integers. So the first rule that we have says that the limit of a sum of two functions is equal to the sum of the two limits. We also have a rule that tells us that the limit of the difference of two functions is equal to the difference of those two limits. So these are some very nice properties for us to work with. We also have that the limit as x goes to a of some constant times a function is equal to the constant times the limit of the function. The limit as x goes to a of a product of two functions is equal to the product of those limits. So, so far, all of these very nice rules for us to work with. Next we get the quotient limit law, which tells us that the limit as x goes to a of f over g is equal to um, the quotient of those limits. The limit as x goes to a of f divided by the limit as x goes to a of g, as long as the limit as x goes to g is not zero, because we know we have to be careful and that we can't divide by zero. One thing that we have to be aware of with this rule is it says that this equality is true as long as this limit is not zero but it doesn't tell us what happens if that limit is zero. So we just want to note that if the limit as x goes to a of oops, goes to a of g of x is equal to zero, the limit of such a, a quotient may exist, and it may not. All um, this rule says is that in order to apply this particular rule, this way of um, breaking up our limit, we'd have to have this property hold. But we can see that, for example, if we wanted to find the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared over x, since the limit as x goes to 0 of x would be 0, I couldn't rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared over the limit as x goes to 0 of x. But instead, I'd have to do something like recognize that x squared over x can be simplified to x, and then I could compute this as having a value of 0. So we just want to be careful when we're dealing with quotients. Our Next rule here is our power rule, which tells us that the limit as x goes to a of a function to a power is equal to um, the limit raised to that power, so we can pull that limit inside. And more generally, we can do the same thing with a fractional power. We just have to be careful that we have um, a positive function in there um, if we're going to be looking at even roots, because we know we can only do things like the square root of a, of a non-negative number. Okay. So we want to just look at a couple of examples where we practice these rules. 
So here we're told that the limit as x goes to 1 of f is 8, the limit as x goes to 1 of g is 3, and the limit as x goes to 1 of h is 2. So we want to use these um, pieces of information together with the limit laws to compute the limit of this quantity here. So I've got a quotient, so I know I'm going to have to um, make sure that the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x minus h of x to the um, fourth is not 0. But I'm going to go ahead and break this up and just stop if I see I have any problem with that denominator going to 0. So I've got the limit as x goes to 1 of f over the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x minus h of x to the fourth. So I've just used the quotient rule. Now I'm going to continue and write this as the limit as x goes to 1 of f over the limit as x goes to 1 of g minus the limit as x goes to 1 of h of x to the fourth. And now in this last step I can apply my power rule. So I've got the limit as x goes to 1 of f all over the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x minus the limit as x goes to 1 of h of x where that limit is being raised to the fourth power. Now I can use all of these pieces of information that I was given at the beginning and substitute these limits with the values that I have. So the limit as x goes to 1 of f is 8, so I've got 8, all over the limit as x goes to 1 of g, which is 3, minus the limit as um, x goes to 1 of h, which is 2. So I have 8 over 3 minus 2 to the fourth, which gives me 8 over negative 13. So that would be um, my limit for this particular example. Okay, so let's try another one of these using um, the limit laws. Here I've got the limit as x goes to 2 of 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 all over 8x minus 6. So using my limit laws, I would write this as the limit as x goes to 2 of 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 where I want to use parentheses around that to indicate that I'm taking the limit of that whole thing, divided by here the limit as x goes to 2 of 8x minus 6. Okay. So then I'm going to have to use my sum and difference rules to say this is the limit as x goes to 2 of 3x squared. I'm going to go ahead and pull that 3 out in front using that constant multiple rule. Minus 4 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus the limit as x goes to 2 of 1. And this is going to be divided by the limit as x goes to 2 of x times 8 minus the limit as x goes to 2 of 6. And it looks like there's one more limit rule that I could use here. To find the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared, what I really need to be doing is the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared. So we're just going to write down these different pieces here. And in fact, we can go ahead and do some of the work that we're going to need for the next line. The limit as x goes to 2 of x is just 2, and the limit as x goes to 2 of 6 is just 6. So we've got 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1, all over 16 minus 6, or 10. So this ends up being, let's see, 12 minus 8 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 5 over 10, or 1 half is the value of our limit here. So that was a lot of work using the limit rules, but this is the, the process that we're actually applying to compute this limit. We'd ideally like to do that a little bit quicker, so we do have the following rule that will help us out. If we're dealing with a polynomial or a rational function, and the value that we're approaching in the limit is in the domain of our function, then we have this nice direct substitution property, which tells us that the limit as x goes to a of f will just be the function evaluated at a. So this example that we were doing previously where we showed how we could compute the limit using our limit properties is a rational function, and 2 is in the domain of this function since the denominator um, will not be 0 if I plug in 2. So I see that I can just compute this by plugging in 2 for x. So I'll get 1 half. 
as I showed on the previous slide. So when you recognize that you're dealing with um, a polynomial or a rational function where your uh, value that you're approaching is in the domain, you can use this nice property. Let's see how this goes in one other example. So here I'm interested in finding the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 over the quantity, the square root of 16 plus 3h plus 4. Now this is not a polynomial or, or a rational function, so I'm going to first just use my limit rules and break this up. I know that um, in the denominator here I'm going to be looking at the limit of the first piece plus the limit of the second piece. Um, and then I can actually pull that limit inside that root. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we know that the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 is just going to be 3. And then we see down here where I've got this limit as h goes to 0 of 16 plus 3h. Well, 16 plus 3h is a polynomial. It's just a linear function. So I can just substitute in 0 for h, and I've just got the square root of 16 there plus 4. So I see that I'm getting a limit of 3 eighths. So once you recognize um, that you can just plug in your, your value, you don't have to show these intermediate steps. We're just practicing doing those um, to get comfortable with these limit rules. Okay. But of course, we cannot always evaluate limits by direct substitution. Only for um, particular nice examples will that work. So if you have something like the limit as x goes to 4 of x squared minus 16 all over 4 minus x, if we try to plug in, we're going to get something like 0 over 0. And that's going to be a problem because that's an, what we're going to um, learn is an indeterminate form. But I see that if I graph this equation here, it does have a limit. So just plugging in isn't going to give us that um, information. So from the graph, we see that the limit as x goes to 4 of this quantity x squared minus 16 over 4 minus x. So as I'm getting closer and closer to 4, I'm getting closer and closer to negative 8. So I see that that's my limit. So one thing that we're going to be discussing next time is how we can algebraically show that this limit is negative 8. Please let me know if you have any questions on any of this.